I'm Pastor Brian Paulson, and this is The Message. We're glad you're listening here in Libertyville, in Lake County, or around the world. Center your heart now with the prayer for illumination, listen deeply to the scripture, and allow the message to speak God's word for your life. Our first reading comes from chapter 8 of Acts, verses 26 through 39. An angel from the Lord spoke to Philip, at noon, take the road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he did. Meanwhile, an Ethiopian man was on his way home from Jerusalem where he had come to worship. He was a eunuch and an official responsible for the entire treasury of Candace. Candace is the title given to the Ethiopian queen. He was reading the prophet Isaiah while sitting in his carriage. The spirit told Philip, approach this carriage and stay with it. Running up to the carriage, Philip heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you really understand what you are reading? The man replied, without someone to guide me, how could I? Then he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. This was the passage of scripture he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was taken away from him. Who can tell the story of his descendants because his life was taken from the earth? The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, about whom does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or someone else? Starting with that passage, Philip proclaimed the good news about Jesus to him. As they went down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, water. What would keep me from being baptized? He ordered the carriage to halt. Both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water where Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Lord's spirit suddenly took Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Let us now hear this passage beginning at verse 11 from the first chapter of Luke. Hear the word of God. An angel from the Lord appeared to Zechariah standing to the right of the altar of incense in the temple. And when Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you. And many people will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the Lord's eyes. He will be great. Now, he must not drink wine or liquor. He he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will bring many Israelites back to the Lord their God. He will go forth before the Lord, equipped with the Spirit and the power of Elijah. He will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children, He will turn the disobedient to righteous patterns of thinking. He will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? My wife and I are very old. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. I was sent to speak to you and to bring this good news to you. Know this, what I have spoken will come true at the proper time. But because you didn't believe, you will remain silent, unable to speak until the day when these things happen. Now, when the time came for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a boy. Her neighbors and relatives celebrated with her because they had heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy. And on their eighth day, it came time to circumcise the child. They wanted to name him Zechariah because that was his father's name. But his mother replied, no, his name will be John. 
And they said to her, None of your relatives have that name. And then they began gesturing to his father to see what he wanted to call him. After asking for a tablet, he surprised everyone by writing, His name is John. And at that moment, Zechariah was able to speak again, and he began praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and everyone throughout the Judea and Hills, Highlands talked about what had happened. All who heard about this considered it carefully, and they said, What then will this child be? Indeed, the Lord's power was with him. Well, John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Bless the Lord God of Israel, because he has come to help and has delivered his people. This is the end of our reading from Holy Scripture today. May we receive it and let our hearts be filled with the spirit of joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I brought something with me today. You know, I love a good book. How many of you like a good book? You like that too? Yeah. I saw this one. The title is Construction Site on Christmas Night. And I knew I had to share it with my grandsons because they would be able to tell me every kind of truck and every kind of uh, construction equipment. But it is a Christmas book, and so with every page, each piece of equipment gets its own gift. And the boys started guessing what the gift would be for each piece of equipment as we went along. But do you know, the very best gift of all was at the end. It is the gift of a home, a home. Well, you know, today, I want to think with you about your home. Because God wants to make a home in your heart. I wonder, are you ready to let Jesus make a heart in your home? Now, in just a little bit, our children will be sharing the story of Christmas and how God made a home in this world. But today is not yet Christmas Day. That'll be next Sunday morning. Those of you who want a church home for Christmas are welcome to join us to sing Christmas carols, and then share Holy Communion on that very special Lord's Day. But today, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Advent, a season to prepare, not just to make decoration preparation, but to prepare our hearts for God, to make a home in our hearts and in this world. And that is why we are taking a moment today to hear the story about how God found a home in the heart of a man from Ethiopia. He was a man who loved books. He loved books so much that he was reading in his chariot. Now think about that. I mean, back in those days, I guess they didn't have laws about reading texts while you are driving your chariot. Well, he is reading along and returning to his home after visiting Jerusalem. But he was reading from the scroll of Isaiah. And Isaiah tells the story of a person whose love is so great that he endured suffering for others because he loved them so much. Now, something told Philip to run beside that chariot. I think God was nudging him to take a risk and ask while running, do you understand what you're reading? And the man responded, how can I without someone to guide me? And from there, Philip explained the love of God in Jesus that Christ offers for all the world. And then something amazing happened. The man brought the chariot to a halt 
and there was a pond at the side of the road. Now, if we were listening in to the actual conversation, I believe we would have heard him say something like this. I want to follow the man in this story. Baptize me now. I want Jesus to have a home in my heart. After baptism, Scripture says the man went on his way rejoicing, filled with joy because God had made a home in his heart. Now, the other passage that I just read describes a man named Zechariah. He was the father of a boy that would be Jesus' cousin, but he didn't believe that God could give a child to him and his wife Elizabeth. The angel Gabriel came to him explaining about his son, saying, you must name him John, he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many people will rejoice at his birth. He was being told good news. The child would bring joy. But Zechariah wasn't so sure. Now, you know, my mother used to tell me, Brian, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Well, <laughs> the angel Gabriel told Zechariah something like that. In fact, Zechariah was unable to speak at all until the day the child was born and ready to move forward and be recognized and named. Until that moment, Zechariah grabbed for a little chalkboard, which is the only way he was able to communicate all those months, and he wrote, his name will be John. And the, just as the angel had foretold, suddenly Zechariah could speak. He could sing. And his voice was filled with joy, just like our children's voices will soon be filled with joy in our pageant. Now, this is what I want to invite you into today. To join the joy of the season. Let Jesus make a home in your heart. Open your heart to the joy that God can bring. Don't close yourself off from all God can offer. Be like Philip. Discover someone who is searching. Share the joy of God's love with them. Join the joy that our children will share today. And then perhaps you will be able to see what Zechariah sang about as was recorded later in this chapter of Luke. He sang out saying, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness. Did you notice it was a sunny day today? and to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The best gift of all, peace, hope, love, and joy in a home, your home, your heart. This I deliver to you in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Thank you for listening on our podcast, or through our YouTube playlist of sermons, be sure to forward this message to someone who you believe is seeking God's word today.